Iran proxy attacks on U.S. forces now up to 108 as they keep escalating. We keep asking, what can we do to stop this? Let's ask former USS Cole Commander Kirk Lipold. Commander, thank you for being here. Happy New Year. You know, there's an old saying in journalism, follow the money. Uh, well, it all seems to lead back to Iran, doesn't it? Well, Happy New Year, David. And yes, it really does come down to the money. And at the end of the day, what that means is the first thing that the U.S. should consider is, is you hear a lot of people talking that, geez, we should go from these attacks on our forces directly to kinetic. In other words, we should be attacking them. The reality is we could go and start doing pre-joint JCPOA or nu Iran nuclear agreement. We could put sanctions on Iran. We yeah. could be begin to inspect maritime. There's a number of things that we could do, but in actuality, you follow sanctions, you get to the money. The money is what Iran needs to continue this war. And and we've we've proven that. I mean, we had the maximum pressure campaign of the previous administration where we imposed these sanctions, uh, and for some reason, this administration thought it would do the world better if we took those sanctions off. We don't have to put our troops at risk. All we have to do is turn off the spigot that the Biden administration opened for the Iranians. Well, and it's not just the Biden administration, David, it's also the Obama administration. They are so desperate for that nuclear agreement, which at this point, let's be realistic, it is dead. The enrichment activities by the Iranians and the Ayatollahs have clearly proven that they are after a weapon. They are going to continue to pursue it. It is going to be a destabilizer, not just for the Middle East, but the world. So we need to take positive steps to do the snapback sanctions and then oppose others to literally begin to strangle Iran as quickly and effectively as right. possible. Well, we also need to make sure that our allies around the world, both in the Far East and in Europe, get on board with it because they need to understand that at this point, the world is entering, and especially the United States, a period of strategic danger between Russia, China, and Iranian activities that are destabilizing the world. Well, Commander, what do we do if Iran does get a nuke? Uh, you know, I think that at that point, we're going to have to look and figure out what we need to do and can we destroy that capability. I'm sure that right now the Joint Chiefs of Staff are very diligently working, trying to figure out, can a strike be done? But you have to remember, we may have a say in that, but at the end of the day, the country that is threatened the most by those nuclear weapons is Israel. And I would not be surprised if Israel gives Iran the opportunity disarm, stand down, mm. or they would make Iran cease to exist. Commander, you have some experience with uh, attacks on U.S. ships yourself as commander of the USS Cole. Uh, have they stopped now in the Red Sea? Because there is more commerce. We don't have much time. But has the task force been successful? The task force has not been successful. And while maritime traffic has picked up, you can see a number of nations have chosen not to come under any kind of U.S or coordinated control. They're taking care of their ships first. So it's a very disjointed effort. But at the end of the day, the Biden administration and Secretary Austin need to exercise leadership in that area to demonstrate that we can keep those shipping safe. Well, thank you for exercising leadership as a commander of the USS Navy. We really appreciate you coming in. Commander Lippold, thank you for being here. Happy New Year to you. So thank you, David. Happy New Year. Hey, everyone. I'm Emily Campagno. Catch me and my co-hosts Harris Faulkner and Kaylee McEnany on Outnumbered every weekday at 12 p.m. Eastern or set your DVR. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page for daily highlights.